This episode of the Europuck podcast is brought to you by DraftKings. Grab your peanuts and popcorn, folks, because baseball is back. Though last year's season was certainly unique, it didn't lack its usual excitement, and as each team returns to the diamond, the upcoming year is poised to be better than ever. DraftKings, the leader in one-day fantasy sports, is putting you on the field with a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Playing fantasy baseball is simple, guys. Just pick 10 different players, stay under the salary cap, and pile up points for hits, runs, strikeouts, and more. There's no better way to put your baseball knowledge to the test, and competing for millions of dollars throughout the week is a great way to show off your skills. If baseball isn't your kind of thing though, don't worry as DraftKings also offers plenty of contests for hockey, baseball and golf too, so you can make it rain on whatever sport is your go-to. Download the DraftKings app now and use promo code THPN during sign up to get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. That's code THPN during uh, during sign up for a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. For a limited time only at DraftKings. A big thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring this episode. Hello, bonjour, hello, hi, hey ya, and yet, hockey fans. Welcome back to the Euro Puck Podcast, the show where two Brits talk all things European hockey as part of the Hockey Podcast Network, brought to you by DraftKings. My name is Hayden, or Oddman Rush, as you can see up there on the screen for the video version, and joining me, of course, is the tiny little head near the bottom of the screen, Chris Gadsby. Hey, Chris. Hello. Have you managed to uh, get rid of the bar? On the yes, I've week? done it. I've done it. Do you want to Hey. Maybe, do you want to maybe move your camera like a little bit further down so you like fill up a little bit more of the screen? A little bit further down. That's perfect. Like that's that. absolutely perfect. There you look, we go. You look stunning, Chris. How are you doing today, bud? <laughs> yeah, not bad. I'm 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 a uh, being an adult again. Where it's Boo. come around to that time of the <laughs> come around to that time of the year again where you start to make home improvements and oh, doing yes. you know adulty things. So this morning, uh, okay. I think there's there's something kind of strangely manly about this as well. I ordered a skip. Oh, you manly man. What are you going to go do? To go to the gym and lift weights afterwards, Chris? Are you going to lift the dumbbells or something? <laughs> I don't need to. We're taking up the concrete path in the garden, and that's heavy enough. Oh, geez. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Um, the, the one thing I want to say about this last week for me is the weather has been absolutely ridiculous. Now, I know this is typical, like, you know, um, water cooler talk, being like, oh, lovely weather we're having, eh, guys? But, like, the, it literally snowed, like, 20 minutes ago while I was walking my dog. Yeah. And I have had three batches of snow today. And oh in between God. the three batches of snow, I've been out in the garden lifting the concrete in a t-shirt. Oh, well, fair enough. <laughs> um, I mean, about 10 days ago... Just it was, to kind of give you the... Yeah, yeah. It's been such a juxtaposition. But like, uh, I, I was uh, telling my sister as we were walking the dog, I was like, we wasn't it like 10 days ago where it was literally 22 degrees outside and like everybody yeah, this time last week yeah everybody was wearing a t-shirt and like if you wore a hoodie you would like be sweating like crazy and now it's snowing yep. like what is going on snowing. yep oh global warming please UK. stop <laughs> yeah uk or global warming or both <laughs> who knows um but since we've had snow recently i guess that means that the hockey season doesn't want to be done just yet and it means that we've still got plenty of things to talk about going on through europe however we are getting towards the beginning of the end, ladies and gentlemen. We're starting to get to the point. I know. I know. Several leagues unless around Europe. Unless you're in the Europe. UK. Yeah, unless you're in the UK. Which just starting. Literally, yeah. Unless, you're, unless you live where we live, in which case you've got another four weeks of hockey madness. Uh, but we're going to talk about that in a lot of detail because the Elite League has started their mini tournament season. And hey. I think we'll go into a bigger discussion compared to some of the other leagues about that. We'll leave that till the end, you know. Yeah. Get, leave something for you guys to hang on to, you know. If you want to know our thoughts on the Elite League, stay till the end of the episode. Um, but let's look at the usual leagues we do uh let's start with the khl first which are currently well I i'm not going to say deep into their um conference final stages but they're they could potentially be at the halfway point of their uh conference final stages yes. based on how things are going at the moment so obviously only four teams remaining um akbar's kazan the first seed the second best team in the regular season throughout the khl currently two games to nothing down on uh, Avangard Omsk, the second seed in the Eastern Conference. So that's a bit of a surprising lead for them. And then on the flip side, I told you it was going to happen, didn't I, Chris? I told you that this was going to be the result. CSKA Moscow, two games to nothing up on SK St. Petersburg. And the thing that's irritated me even more is the fact that St. Petersburg haven't scored a single goal so far this series, and I hate it. I was going to bring that up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
So, uh, Chris, what are your I love thoughts? It. Well, yeah, I, I know you do. Um, what are your thoughts on the first two games of each of the finals? Obviously, we've got a game going on today. I believe it's game three of the Western finals. So, hopefully, St. Petersburg can it's get game, a win. But... Game three between uh, Moscow and St. Petersburg, starting in about a quarter of an hour um, okay. as we're recording this. Now, it is surprising me that St. Petersburg haven't even scored, I'll be honest. Yeah, it's shocking. Um, it's absolutely not shocking. A, not a very good <laughs> showing um, from St. Petersburg early on. Um, neither of the four games in the conference finals so far have gone to overtime, so I need a game to go to overtime for the uh, for that to, to carry on. And I've decided to jump away from CSK Moscow that the random generator brought up for me. <laughs> I'm going to avant-garde Omps because... I want the second seed to win and you've already got St. Petersburg. And I think I just love Akbar's Kazan, who have been so dominant early on in this playoffs, have only scored one goal in two games at home. Wow. You know, really fair play to, to Avangard for that one, uh, lead, leading by 2-0. So hopefully they can carry on uh, going, with, uh, going with that. And also, Chris, I think you've made a good choice in Avangard Omsk if you wanted to go for the underdog because they haven't won a Gagarin Cup championship yet, as far as I'm aware, since the KHL started. So, you know, the only team in the final four that hasn't won a championship, why not pick them? They're doing quite well so far. Um, the big storyline for um, Avangard Omsk, though, especially, well, pretty much since the beginning of the playoffs, to be honest, is the fact that um, Omsk forward Reed Boucher, former Utica Comets forward and former Vancouver Canucks, he's played in the NHL a couple of hundred games. I've mentioned him in a, in a video or two of mine. Um, he's on a seven 17 game point streak which is uh i believe it's now set a new khl record for uh points scored in consecutive games and he's got it in 17 straight games and he's obviously a big reason as to why avant-garde omsk is two nothing up in the series so a very surprising two nothing lead you would have thought it would have been either two nothing kazan or one one either side at this point especially like chris mentioned kazan have been so dominant this playoffs they haven't actually lost a game until the conference final stage so the fact that they're two nothing down is is shocking to me and then obviously going over to the moscow st petersburg situation like we mentioned st petersburg haven't scored a goal both of the games were in moscow so moscow had the home ice advantage but still that's not really an excuse for not scoring a single goal but then again kazan have only scored one themselves so you know it's been a it's been a difficult run for the the teams that are down in this series so far but there's a reason it's a seven game series the whole way through there may, there may be a chance for either the first seed in the east or the second seed in the west to maybe jump back in and make this a series or we might be getting our brooms out by this time next week because uh, we probably should mention it's the 6th of <laughs> April today. Um, so, yes. uh, we, this, this, yeah, this is our first episode of April, isn't there it? There is the potential. Uh, yes, there is yeah. the potential that with game three tonight <laughs> and game four on Thursday, that if it is a sweep, that's done by the time this podcast comes out. Oh, yeah, that's a really good point, actually. <laughs> and another point and i know we're only like two games into potential seven game series and i'll be honest i don't know the answer to this has anyone ever been swept out of a series without even scoring i would not think so i i don't know the khl individual so stats well. I, don't, I don't know the individual playoff stats that well in terms of the khl history because you're relying but... on a, a goalie getting like four shutouts in four games yeah so which... i suspect it hasn't happened yeah I, probably I would, anywhere yeah i would <laughs> i would imagine the kind of desperation that kicks in for that lower seed will at least get them a goal they might not get them a win in the series yeah. but you think it would get them at least one goal past the netminder so hopefully for kazan and St. if Petersburg, anyone knows yeah exactly yeah if anyone knows do let us know um uh, but hopefully St. Petersburg and Kazan can maybe pick up a few wins, maybe make this a more competitive uh, series, maybe get an overtime game there. You know, we've got to keep that mm. streak going. But other than that, there isn't really a huge amount to talk about. CSK, Moscow and Omsk are pretty much going about their business and getting the yeah. job done. Yeah. Can't really ask much more from them. Um, so let's move on to a league that we don't usually talk about next, but we feel like we should give them their time in the spotlight because they're the first league in Europe to actually finish their 2021 hockey season. And that is... The Polish League. Obviously, we talked about them last week. We talked about how the for the finals was going and kind of where they were at as things stood last episode. We have now know the winner of the Polish League playoffs, and that was Jastrowie, the second seed, taking a 4-1 to one li uh, series against uh, the sixth seed, Krakow. I, I give a big round of applause to Krakow, though, because they had a solid effort yeah. in this playoffs, taking out the third seed and the first seed in the first two rounds. 
They obviously didn't have enough gas left in the tank to take out the second seed as well. That would have been a Herculean effort from them. But, you know, they, they put up a really respectable fight. Tishi takes third place. We already knew that last week. So, basically, the, sec did, yep. the second seed finishes as the first seed. The sixth seed finishes as the second seed. The first seed finishes as the third seed. And then the fourth seed finishes as the fourth seed. So, at least one of them was consistent yeah. with the rest of them. Um, so, yeah. Chris, what are your thoughts on the Polish League now that it's all over? It, it is all over, yeah, as you said. Um, Yastrzewie, of course, with that 4-1 win, qualify for the Champions Hockey League. We've had um, five teams qualify for the Champions Hockey League this week, yeah. um, which uh, which we will run through. Um, sorry, six <coughs> teams, sorry, six teams that have qualified, which we'll, I'll run through as we uh, as we go along. Um, so, yeah, plenty to, uh, you know, for Yastrzewie fans to get excited about next season as well going into the Champions Hockey League. You kind of felt that they would probably take this series being up against the sixth seed but then again when they've taken away the third seed and the first seed as you said they probably they just didn't have the legs and they went two nothing down from the Astrobis two home games so it was going to be difficult for them to come back anyway um but yeah fair play to, to the Astrobis to to winning that league and you kind of feel that they they do deserve kind of winning that league because if you remember they only finished uh, two points behind Tishy in the regular season, in the 36-game regular season. That's because Tishy had two overtime losses that that Yastrubi didn't. They got the same number of regulation wins, the same number of overtime wins. Yastrubi's goal difference was better by 12. So, you know, they are worthy champions, champions of that league. And it's also worth mentioning that they only lost two games throughout the entirety of the playoffs too. So it's not as if they, yeah. they kind of got through to the finals by the skin of their teeth or anything. They took out MMKS Pod, uh, Podhale, I should say, uh, swept them in the first round and only lost one game against Katowice to stick them in the third place uh, playoff. And then, you know, take Krakow down in five games. I mean, that's a pretty formidable effort yeah. from a team like Yastrowy. And like you say, well-deserving of being there, well-deserving of earning the championship because... Uh, they weren't that far off from Tishi in the regular season. And unlike Tishi, they yep. managed to back it up in the playoffs as well. So congratulations to the Polish League for managing to have a regular season, get that finished, let alone started, and go all the way through to the playoffs and get that all complete. And it's the first league that we've seen so far this season that has managed to complete their season. So we won't need to talk about the Polish League for the rest of our episodes this year. As you would imagine, there's not really anything else to talk about, let's be perfectly honest. So yeah, that's the end of the Polish League. Uh, let's move on to some other leagues that are pretty far uh, through their playoffs as things stand right now. We're kind of this week going in terms of, we do the KHL first because obviously they're the biggest league in Europe and kind of the biggest one to talk about. And, and then we're kind of looking at each of the leagues in order of who are deeper into the playoffs. So we took the Polish League next because they've managed to finish up. Let's move on to the Austrian League now, or the Ice Hockey League, the Austrian slash elsewhere in Europe League, I'm going to call it. Um, so we have one team that's made it to the finals now. One semi-final bracket has been decided. Uh, Klagenfurt, the second seed, took out Red Bull Salzburg, the third seed, in five games. But we still have one more series to go in the semi-finals, and that's HC Bolzano taking on the Vienna Capitals, the first and fourth seed, three games to two. So still everything to play for in that series. Is there a game seven in the in the cards? Will Bolzano take them out in six? Will it be a one-two um, finals, uh, of one-two seed finals, or a four-two seed finals? Chris, what are your thoughts on the Austrian league and their playoffs so far? Um, Chris, I think you've muted yourself. I'm not sure I can hear you. <laughs> I muted myself. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay, no go. worries. <laughs> I've got, as well as the um, the screen there, I've got the buttons on here. And if it right. like, knocks against the chair, I can mute myself. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I, I chair, immediately like... heard you not talking and I thought, let's nip this in the bud right now. <laughs> <laughs> no that's fine yeah just let me know I'm really liking the Austrian league mm. um, you know really fair play to Vienna to take Bolzano to, to five games already and they're still within uh, in with a chance there because they are at home for game six tomorrow night um, as we're recording this Klagenfurt of course they will be hoping that Bolzano win that game six why you potentially ask me <laughs> because if they do that they get the trophy of Austrian champions yeah the most important <laughs> trophy in the entirety of hockey <laughs> <laughs> Falls out and get through into uh, the final, yeah. So you know there is uh, there's that as well. Of course, Klagenfurt already in the Champions Hockey League. The um, you kind of don't get an extra place unless there might be some working down that you need to do. But there kind of isn't the tour the playoff winner position, right? Um, because Austria only get uh, six, five, four. Not sure because I'm not at this point, but. It's you know they they might get some in, but 
I think I want Vienna personally because of the underdogs. Um, yeah. But yeah, really, even if they come out, you know, fair play to Vienna because they've taken Bolzano, who just you know, really dominated in that first part of the of the season. They finished what? Okay, three points clear of Klagenfurt, but they never really looked like being caught. Vienna, who were in fourth. So uh, I'm in, I'm liking the Austrian league. I, I want Vienna to win now that there's no black wins to wind you up with. <laughs> fair play. Um, do you have the um the series between Bolzano and Vienna like on hand, or could you get it on hand quickly just to kind of see like how yeah, the games have it. gone? Um, because I'm I'm curious to know if if uh Bolzano took a really early league. So I I'm not not gonna lie, I've no, completely forgotten they didn't. the scores. Okay. So um, it's going with the home games to be honest okay. so first game Bolzano 2-1 second game Vienna 2-1 third game Bolzano 6-3 fourth game Vienna 4-1 so even the even the gaps between the teams have been the same all the way yeah. through the series so if it goes if it goes to the form Vienna will win tomorrow night by two goals and it will all come down to the game seven Oh, that's going to be interesting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, if, if things keep going the way they're going, the home team, Bolzano, and sometimes it does make a difference if you end up having that home ice advantage and maybe Bolzano would be able to capitalise on that. But regardless, like you say, Vienna, they've given it a good fight regardless. It's not very often we see the losing team have two wins, uh, although they still lost in six or, six or even seven games. So the fact that we've actually put, had the losing team put up a bit of a fighting chance, I like to see that, you know? Um, so that's a look at the Austrian league. Let's move on to the Czech extra league now, shall we? And they mm -hmm. ha are, they're pretty, they're kind of the halfway through their semi-final stage, similar kind of point to where the KHL conference finals are at this moment in time. And one very yeah. interesting result and one kind of result that we would have expected. So, uh, HC Sparta Prague are currently two games down to Billy Tigri Liberec. Uh, the fourth seed, so the first seed down to the fourth seed, and then Osleri Trinec, the second seed, against Mlada Boleslav, the third seed, 1-1. One, one. So the second and third seed, you know, they're they're very close. You would expect that. The But the, fir the first and fourth seed, the fourth seed's winning two games to nothing, Chris. What is happening in the Czech League at the moment? Yeah, so, I mean, the first game, Sparta Prague just never really showed up. Um, I... The Czech League is one that I get statistics on. So they took the lead in the first period, uh, okay. right near the end of the first period, and they were 1 0 up. Then they it go, was 1 1 after two periods. And then Liberec just turned it up 147, 852, 1420, and 1926. Four wow. unanswered goals in that third period. If I just look at the stats for the third period, there were actually equal shots on goal um, with 12 each in the third period. So Liberec with, well, scoring one in every three shots. Um, yeah, one in every three shots yeah. in that uh, final period. But you know, it's not as though Sparta Prague were just played off. They just, Liberate just got everything. But And then in the second game, they lost 3-1. So they've only scored one goal uh, at home in the in the first two two games of the playoffs are not great. Liberec will now feel they've got a great chance of getting through to the final because their next two games are at Liberec. So, They'll feel like they've got a great opportunity. That other one, as you said, 2-0 and 3-1. So again, two goal margins there, kind of what we would expect. Um, I'll just check, see if any of these were empty netters. I suspect they might have been. Um, not in that game one, it wasn't. And in game two, uh, no, again, it wasn't. So no empty netters in that. So those are kind of what I would call legit yeah. uh, goals all the way through. Um, but I think that one is going to be quite close. Uh, the, as you said, the Sparta Prague Libre one, I am quite surprised at. Um, and even, I suppose, even the Trinek Mladla uh, Bolosev one as well, there was, what, nine point difference, so three game difference between the two sides over the 52 game regular season. But yeah, we could be in for a great series uh, with that one. Um, next two games in the Sparta Libre one are tomorrow and Thursday. So again, when this comes out, <laughs> it's already been done interesting okay fair enough unfortunately we can't get it done like when the final games of the series are being run if we tried to record it like the day it goes out yeah that wouldn't go very well because there's a lot of work that goes right. behind this um but yeah it's interesting to see that the first seed is down obviously our kind of soft spot for underdogs we're not going to complain at any point i don't think um but yeah it's, it's really interesting to see that 
I mean, the, the, the problem is all of these teams swept their opponents in the quarterfinal round. So it's really difficult to know what kind of matchups there are going to be because it's not as if any of these teams showed any kind of weakness during their previous round. Because don't forget, all of the four teams that are still in the competition, they all got a first round bye. So every single game they played before yeah. the semi-final round... They swept their opponent. Obviously, uh, Prague may have got the easier running of it compared to some of the others with the 12th seed Olomouc. Although Olomouc did beat the 5th seed in the first round, so they were there by their own uh, merit, you know. But the fact that there were no teams that, you know, lost a couple of games or or threw a game and ended up losing uh, in five, it, it just goes to show that, like, they showed no signs of weakness against their previous opponents. So it's really difficult to kind of gauge how they're going to play against each other. And now that they are, it's really interesting to see that Sparta Prague have struggled early on. Obviously, like we said in the KHL, it's the seven game series, you know, anything can happen. Um, but, you know, the more games they lose, the less likely it is, right? And uh, the Trinec uh, Boloslav game yeah. or series is going to be fun to keep an eye on because, you know, 1 1, I feel like that could easily be a 2 2 series after their next two games. Well, by the looks of it, they seem to be quite close and they're kind of trading wins here and there. So. I would be surprised if Liberec managed to sweep Sparta Prague. Obviously, we're talking that might not happen, but given the fact that, you know, they're already halfway there, they might be living on a prayer, folks. So there you go. Uh, that's a look at the Czech Extra Liga. Let's move on to one of the smaller or, or lower tier leagues in Europe who are also in the semi final stage right now. And the last one that's in the semi final stage, that's the Danish Meta League, and folks. We obviously had a little bit of a chat about them uh, last week and a few weeks before. They're in the semi-final stage. Now, nothing has been decided yet so far, but the first seed, uh, Rungsted Sea Capitals, my boys, two games to one up on Sonders Yike. And then the Ullborg Pirates, the second seed, two games to one up on the third seed, Eschberg Energy. So unlike the Czech Extra League, Chris, we've got these guys running along with the normal script and following conventions. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, the Danish Metal League, not the Czech Extra League. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, one point to mention is at the end of um, the first period at the moment, uh, Esberg are one nil up over Alborg, so oh. that could go two two. Okay. Um. So, yeah, we'll we'll kind of see what happens in that one. I suspect. Well, it will be in the third. I would say by the time, uh, or at least the end of the second, by the time we finish the podcast at the moment. But I mean, last week when we were talking, you know, Sonders Jike took the first game against Rungstad. So Rungstad have turned it around, but it's not been that kind of, I wouldn't say convincing, but they've been, it's been a 3-2 game and a 4-3 game. It's not like Sonders Jike have just kind of rolled over it and let Rungstad go around them. They've been you know, really going for it. Um, seems to be that the game winning goal uh, was really late on in game two, 18-04. And in game three, it was a power play goal. So, you know, these are really close games. So don't be surprised if Sondershite gets another win or two, you know, takes it to six, takes it to seven. Yeah, I, th I think they're well within, the, it's well within the realm of possibility given their recent performances. And like you say, the Edgeburg Energy, by the time, slightly after we finish recording this, and certainly by the time the podcast goes up, they could certainly be back in this series. I mean, they're not out of it by any means so far. It's nice to actually see a, a semi final series or both semi final series where like a, a team isn't in the, a chance of being swept you know it's nice to see them get a little bit more mm. competitive than some of the other leagues in europe now obviously there there might be a bit more of a less or less of a disparity between the teams in the uh, danish meta league and compared to elsewhere in europe but you know it's nice to see so we've got a couple of leagues now we're kind of blitzing through these but there isn't really much else to say because there aren't we're not at the not end really. of a lot of these not series when, not when you, there's only four teams left and they've only played like two games since the last uh that's yeah, cool. don't worry. We'll spend plenty of time talking about the Elite League towards the end because I'm sure we've both got a few <laughs> things to say. Um, so let's move on to uh, two leagues. Or we'll start with one of them, obviously, but a pair of leagues that have only just ended their regular seasons and they're two of the bigger leagues in Europe finally got to the postseason and now we can show you the final results. So the Swedish Hockey League, let's have a little chat about them, shall we? So the first seed in the Swedish Hockey League, the Vaxha Lakers. We thought that they might overtake Rögle in the final few games of their regular season. They managed to do it, no surprise. Then um, the second seed, Rögle BK, obviously, no surprise. Then uh, Lexans managed to finish with the third seed, considering they're one of the smaller hockey markets in the Swedish Hockey League. Managing to do that is pretty impressive. Then uh, uh, Sheleftia is the fourth seed, with Lulia as the fifth seed. The sixth seed, 
Uh, Because I haven't actually got the, like, final standings up. I've got the playoff bracket, so they're all, like, over the place. Um, So the sixth... Okay, I'll talk final standings afterwards then. Sure. Then uh, the sixth seed is Albro. The seventh seed is Frolunda. The eighth seed is Firestar. The ninth seed is Malmo. And the tenth seed is Jagordan. So those are the ten teams that made it to the Swedish Hockey League playoffs. And uh, do you want to take it through the final standings? I'll bring up the final standings, actually. Um, yeah, so um, Oscar Shamanen in 11, Ling Shaping's in 12, so they've got nothing. And then we've got Brunas against HV71 in the playout, which is uh, starting, uh, I don't know when, it's, when the first game is, but um, well, the first game is tonight, and they've got four scheduled. So it looks like it's a best of seven playout. Which yes, is, it is. Uh, it is. I, I, I actually want to bring, yeah, bring up a point about that. So if you just want to take us through the final stands, I just need to find the tweet that said, I yeah, think it was so the, the Champions the one Hockey thing. League. So there was a couple of uh, things right at the end. So the one thing that I find really interesting, Lexans with a win against Malmo on the final day of the season secured them third place and a place in the Champions Hockey League next year. Rogler, Vaxko and Lexans, the top three in the Swedish League, joined Frölunda, the current uh, Champions Hockey League champions, in the Champions Hockey League for next season. So congratulations to Lexans who really finished the season strongly. They finished the season on a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight game winning streak to secure that spot Damn. in the Champions Hockey League. Um and it just we were looking at a time that you know Brinas might be able to to sneak out of the playout, but it just didn't happen in the end. So you've got those two teams competing for the playout. You've got uh, Frolunda against the Jardins and uh Feistad against Malmo. Now these playoffs Again, they are. Um, though they have started now. The uh, first games were last night. Both three-one victories um, for the higher-ranked side in that one. And um, this is a two-legged affair. Um, so it will be an aggregate score over the first two legs. So it's going to be difficult now for Malmo and uh, Desjardins to get themselves back into this one. They've got to win by three goals. Um, and they have got to win by three goals away from home in both instances as well. Interesting. So I can't find the uh, the tweet that I was looking for, but I saw, I can't remember who posted it, but I saw a stat saying that um, Brinas and HV71, um, obviously they're in the playout round, best of seven series. Mm-hmm. Both of them have been in the Swedish Hockey League. I think they've been consistently in the Swedish Hockey League. You might need to fact check me on this or somebody listening might need to fact check me. But I believe they've right. both they've both been in the Swedish Hockey League since the sixties. I think this is like the first time they're playing in the playout round. Either like one of them since the forties and one of them since oh, the sixties. Okay. So like we're we're talking about two teams that have had a lot of experience playing in the Swedish Hockey League, have been considered one of the top teams in Sweden for the last half a century, and they're now they're now playing in the playout round. It just goes to show you how how crazy things can be sometimes. So um, I, I, you might need to fact yep, check me I'll on have, that. Uh, I'll have a look. And yeah, I, I tried to yep, look on the Champions Hockey now. League uh, uh, Twitter, but they I thought it was them that posted it, but it wasn't. But while, while you do that, I'll take you through the playoff brackets. So the first, the second, and uh, so only the first and the second seed are the only teams that have a first round bye, by the looks of it. Or um, they've because they've got some of the matchups. The fourth and fifth seed, for example, are matched up, but they're not playing until the quarterfinal round. So it looks like several teams. So first through sixth have got that first round bye. But uh, in order to find out who's playing the first and second seed, you have that round of eight. So that that, that makes sense. So um, like we saw in the Swedish Hockey League standings here, first to sixth. So Vaxha down to Orbro. They've got a first round bye. They don't play anybody. But several of the quarterfinals brackets have already been decided because there's only two teams that are going to come through from the from the first round of the playoffs into the second round. So uh, it's either going to be Firestad or Malmo to go and play Vaxha, the eighth and ninth seed, or it's going to be Falunda and Jagordan to play Rogla in the uh, second round for, as the second seed. So um, as things stand right now, Firestad, the eighth seed, playing Malmo, the ninth seed, one nothing up for Firestad. The uh, series or the uh, playoffs only just started recently. So um, very early days in this. And obviously the more... The, the, uh, over the next week or so, we'll get a really clear idea of who's going through to the second round. And then Frölunda, the seventh seed against Jagordan, which um, my uh, my guest appearance on Hockey Ferber um, told me that these two are actually quite the rival teams 
uh, from what I've been told. So the, um, the, this must be a really interesting uh, playoff series for those two to go up against in the first round. Fulunder have taken a one to nothing series lead. They are the seventh seed against the tenth seed, and whoever wins that gets to go through against Rogla. Now, wh while those quarterfinal uh, matchups are being decided, the the matchups that we do know that are taking place in the second round: Shaleftia against Lulia, the fourth and fifth seed, and Lexans against Albro, the third and sixth seed. So I think I figure that out. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys listening. Chris, did you manage to find that stat? Yeah, so um, uh, da, da, da. so as far as I could make out, um, you've got Brina, who, yes, have been in the division since 1960. Um, they've been in relegation Playouts, but have always won them. Right. HV seventy one was about nineteen seventy five. Right. My bad. I can decide okay. they've been in the top tier. Okay. Interesting. So I mean, we've got, but well, even still, we've still got teams that have been in the top tier. Yeah, they may have been to the playout round, but they've survived the playout, and they've been in the top tier for the last 40, 50 years. And that it just goes to show you, like, obviously they've slacked off a little bit in some of the newer, maybe fresher teams have come up and managed to get the job done where they haven't. So um, that's a look at the Swedish Hockey League as it stands right now. It's a little bit confusing when you first look at it, but once you sit in there and have a little think about it, it makes sense. Um, so Firestad, one nothing up on Malmo, and uh, Frölunda, one nothing up on Jogordan. And that's the only playoffs that have been played so far. Once we come back next week, I would imagine we'd be at least three games into those series so we can have a little chat about whether we're going to see who's going to go through, maybe a team's already gone through, and how the quarterfinal matchups look. Um, speaking of a very similar situation in Europe, let's talk about the Swiss National League, shall we, folks? So a very similar, pretty much the exact same yep. um, format to the Swedish Hockey League. Um, the first seed and the second seed, uh, they don't know who they're playing yet in the uh, in the second round of the playoffs. So, so first through sixth, once again, all have a bye. The eighth and ninth seed and the seventh and tenth seed are playing. Whoever wins each of them will go up against the first and second seed. The fourth and fifth seed are playing each other in the second round, and the third and sixth seed are playing each other. So, uh, Chris, do you want to just take us through the final standings of the uh, Swiss National League? Um, so, And then I'll take them through the playoffs. Yes. Yep, so no surprise to anybody, really, that um, Zug won the league. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, they finished with 100... <laughs> <laughs> they uh they finished with 119 points um which was 2.29 points per game then Lugano in second Freeborg in third Lausanne in fourth Zurich in fifth Savet in sixth Biel in seventh Davos in eighth Bern in ninth Rappersville in tenth Ambry Piotta in eleventh so Rappersville uh you know with some good wins towards the uh, end and having the game in hand that never got played just got them in there above Ambry Piotta and the Langnau Tigers down in 12 well, obviously they've done a points per game thing. We'll mention as well that they've taken the top four. So Zouk, Lugano, Freiburg, Gotteren and Lausanne. They're in the Champions Hockey League. So those are another four um, in the Champions Hockey League. So, yeah, it was kind of, it was one where you couldn't really call it too much because of doing the points per game. And yeah. Burn, for example, are played 48 they are on 56 points. They've done quite well points per game. As you said, again, it's this situation of the the top two teams don't know who they're playing yet because they're going to play whoever's through this first round. So it's why the playoff bracket looks a bit strange at the moment. Yes, and speaking of the playoff bracket, I'll just take you through the matchups for the first round. So you have HC Davos playing against SC Bern, the 8th and ninth seed, going up against each other in that first round. And the only other series in that first round is uh, Beal against the Rappersville Yona Lakers, the 7th and 10th seed. So whoever wins between Davos and Bern will be playing against the 1st seed juggernaut that is Evie Zug. Whoever wins the 7th and 10th seed matchup will be going up against the 2nd seeded HC Lugano. Then, obviously, elsewhere in the second round, you've also got Lausanne HC taking on the Zurich Lions, the 4th and 5th seed. Then you've got Freeborg Gotteren taking on Geneva Savet HC as the 6th seed. But as it stands right now, no games have been played in the Swiss National League playoffs, so not really much to report on. We just wanted to take you through the final regular season standings, and that's where things are right now. So hopefully by this time next week, we'll have a few uh, results to talk about. I don't think we'll be through to the second round of the playoffs just yet, but we'll have some results no. to maybe get an indication of who's going through. So that's all of the playoffs within uh, Europe. All, all of the leagues are about to start the playoffs, are into their playoffs. 
well into their playoffs or have finished their playoffs even for the first time in this series. Let's move on to the leagues that are still in their regular season. Uh, we've only got four of them to look at because obviously the Norwegian Fjordcraft Ligaen cancelled their season last week, as we mentioned. So let's move on to one of the bigger leagues in Europe, the Finnish Liga, Chris. Do you want to take us through the standings of uh, the Finnish League, Chris, and um, give us your yes. thoughts on some of the changes that have taken place? Yes. So once again, the Finnish Liga, because they need to get their playoffs started, they're doing points per game. So yes. if you look at the league table, that's why you've got Luko, who, yes, should be out in front, just over two points per game. That's why in second place, you've got Helsinki on 90, and in third place, you've got Turku on 100, um, because Turku have played nine games more than Helsinki. Yes. Uh, fourth place is Cowper, fifth is Ilvers, sixth is Tapera, seventh Carpat, eight Pelicans, ninth Coco, uh, tenth Vassen Sport, eleventh Hamelina, twelfth Asat, thirteen Saipe, fourteen JYP, and fifteen. Ukrit. Now, the things to look at at the top are Kalper on a good winning streak, Helsinki on a good winning streak. Luka and Helsinki have already secured themselves first round buys. And also, Luka have secured themselves a Champions Hockey League spot Ooh. for next year. One of the regulars in the Champions Hockey League. Um, they have secured themselves it yet again. The league runs for another week. Um, it finishes on the 13th, which is a week today. So we'll probably record on Wednesday next week to Good have idea. the league um, to have the league completely done. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the league really. It's still there are many kind of teams in there. You know, Cowper are on 1.71 uh, and Carpat are on 1.66. Pelicans 1.65. That could easily change with some of the teams because. Some of these teams might be playing three games in this final week, whereas some teams are only playing one. So it's really difficult to say, oh, they could get in, they might not. It, it is a difficult one to to talk about at the moment. Absolutely. I think it's also worth mentioning that the Finnish Liga have a very similar playoff uh, set up to the Swiss National League and Everybody the SHL. Six, yeah. six teams get the first round by, the seventh plays the tenth, the eighth plays the ninth. They decide who's going up against the first and second seeds. So... I mean, Luko and Helsinki have already secured their positions. It looks like Carpat, the Pelicans, Cuckoo and Vassen Sport, they're going to be competing to see who goes up against Luko and Helsinki, and they are two very difficult teams to play against. It'll also be worth mentioning, Chris, kind of jumping back to the KHL Flash Schools, the app on my phone, obviously we're looking at the uh, um, uh, the desktop version. Um, it's just told me that SK St. Petersburg have finally broken their shutout streak against CSK in Moscow. Um, so they're one, look. they're one nothing up in that game by Timkin, I believe. Yes. So that's good. I'm yep. glad about that. <laughs> so they have actually scored. Maybe yeah, home ice Guinea, advantage will help. Timkin, his, <laughs> his uh, second goal of the playoffs. Yes. So I, I just saw that on my phone as, as you were talking through the Finnish Liga, and I thought we should may as well mention that, because look, St. Petersburg finally scored a goal. Miracles can happen, folks. <laughs> um, so let's move on to the Danish, uh, not the Danish Metal League, and we've already talked about them. Uh, the Did DEL them. is what I want to talk about. The DEL. Um, we've already got two teams that have secured themselves a place in the playoffs. Um, so I'll take you through the standings, then Chris will get your thoughts and a little look at the different streaks that some of these teams have been on. So in the north, the Berlin Ice Bears already secured themselves a place in the playoffs. Uh, 67 points in 31 games. Bremerhaven have 61 points in 32 games for the second seed in the North. The Islo and Roosters, 43 points in 30 games. There's a huge disparity between the top two teams and the rest of the league, or the rest of their division. Then the Wolfsburg Grizzlies, 43 points also, but in 31 games played. So very close there. Battle for the third seed. You've got Dusseldorf not that far behind either, With uh, although they have 44 points in 32 games. So I'd imagine they might be doing it based on points per game percentage or uh, points per matches played something like that i would imagine um but they haven't got that listed on flash scores so we're just going to take it at face value as it stands then you've got the cologne sharks i think the thing I'll is with that is i think that i was going to say i was going to they're probably doing it um just in case they have to do that quick cancel because the da yeah. has always been really um like conscious of it but I, and let, until they actually say that's definitely what they're doing, then um, I suspect that's that's why. Yeah, but especially because they've got Dusseldorf with 44 points, two places back from third, even though they've got one more point than the other two. But they have played at least one more game in hand than the other two opponents. That would make sense based on what we've seen from yeah. some of the other leagues in Europe. So the Cologne Sharks, 41 points in 32 games. And then the Crayfield Penguin, our favourites, 15 points, 31 games. They have scored 61 goals. They have allowed 144. Oh, geez. 
Uh, then in the <laughs> South Division, we have Adler Mannheim taking the first spot and the first playoff berth in the South. 75 points in 32 games. So they are clearly the undisputed leader in the DL this year. They're don't know what's happened down there in Adler Mannheim, but they're getting the job done. Uh, then you've got Red Bull Munich, 61 points in 31 games. They've been on a bit of a winning streak recently. You've got uh, Ingolstadt with 55 points in 31 games. They're very comfortable in the third seed in the South, uh, with the Schweiniger Wild Wings taking the fourth place in the South with 43 points in 31 games. The Straubing Tigers, 41 points in 31 games, so not that far behind a playoff berth. The Augsburg Panther, also 41 points in 32 games. So once again, Chris, I think we're seeing an example of the South being pretty dominant over the north and then the Nuremberg Ice Tigers 27 points in 31 games so that is the standings as things are right now Chris your thoughts on the DEL season yeah I mean it's there is starting to be a bit more red turning up in the south um mm. if we just talk about the the points of course so it's a 38 game season yes. in the DEL so if you look let's look in the north let's look at Dusseldorf They've got 18 points left available, so they could get to 62. So Bremerhaven, they're one point away from the playoffs. Yes. If we look in the south, Straubing Tigers, they can also get to 62. So Red Bull Munich, one point away from the playoffs. So we are starting to see that. I mean, particularly in the north, like those final two spots are really going to come down to the wire. Um, yeah. Ingolstadt will probably get in with a few games to go, but to Schweiniger, Straubing and Augsburg, that will go down to the wire as well. So, you know, it's not very far away from being able to tell kind of what's going to happen here. Let's look at Crefeld Penguin. They can get 21 points. That gets them to 36. They're already out. Aww. Let's look at Nuremberg. They can get 21 points. That takes them to 48. They're very nearly already out. Aww. So, you know, we want to just kind of keep Looking at the DL finishers, bear with me on the uh, do 18th. So, okay. two podcasts' time, we'll have the day at DL finished. Interesting. God, we are really getting towards the end of these regular seasons. And I mean, by the time the DL season is over, we'll be either completed several different European playoffs and kind of through to the conference finals or semi final stages of loads of them. God, well, the if you think that we're only seven like seven weeks, seven and a half weeks away from the world championships. So everything's yeah. going to be finished by them. That's a good point. That's worth mentioning. Absolutely. Oh, I'm looking forward to the world championships this year, Chris. I, I, <laughs> I, I feel like because we've been so starved of hockey in the UK, I just want to see GB back on the ice again. It's been too long. It's been too yeah. long. Um, so the penultimate league that we're going to look at, usually the final league, but this league has also finished its regular season. So we're going we're gonna to finish off this episode with an ending but then also with a beginning also. So the French League Magnus, <laughs> ladies and gents, has finished their season, according to Chris. So if he's wrong, blame him. Uh, but as far as I'm aware, they have finished no, they their have. season. So um, have, yeah. I'll take you through the final standings, then Chris will get your thoughts. So the Are final you standings... Are uh, oh, Flash score out of curiosity? Yes, I am on Flash score. Is that wrong? Looking at that. Yeah, there is, there is a slight... Yeah, so um, I, I had a look through again, just to keep... So I, I found it strange that the league would be wrong yeah i kind of thought that's not like the league is surely right and the league is right um but all that's happened is flash scores but they haven't taken enough points off nice um so i'll just in mm. the in the nicest way um i will just um have a look at the i'll compare the two and then just go through what the differences are okay um, from what i gather i think it's relatively the same but Nice should be below Mulhouse. But when it decides it wants to load up, I'll tell you. Um, so the final standings is Rouen, Angers, Grenoble, Gap, Sergi Pontois, Amiens, Bordeaux, Mulhouse, Nice, Anglais, Chaminot, and um, Brie. Yeah, so on flash scores, Nice should be on 27 and be in ninth. That's the only difference okay. in terms of the ranking. Okay, fair enough. So, um, uh, so yeah, like Chris mentioned, the final standings of the season. Obviously, they did it based on their own little points thing because of the mismatch in uh, games played by certain teams. It's not quite. It's not quite the same as the other leagues that we've looked at in terms of points no, per matches played. Is it? They did that average rule of three thing. Yes. Yeah, so. So basically, uh, the French League season has ended. Uh, it would take us far too much effort to sit there and explain all of it to you um, for the amount of people that are probably sitting there going, oh, Hayden, Chris, tell me about the French League Magnus season, please. Uh, so, <laughs> Well, Rouen, 
Rouen have got the Champions Hockey League. There's no relegation. They're not doing any playoffs. There's no cup. French League is done. So like the Polish League, we just won't talk about it anymore. Yeah, basically the French League Magnus is done. And you know what? Speaking of Champions Hockey League, I'm really excited for that to come back as well. I really miss the Champions Hockey League this year. I don't know, like, it's one of those leagues that you kind of tune into when you get the chance. It's not necessarily one that you're like, oh, I have to sit down and watch all these matches unless it's your native team. But the fact that, like, we, I, I feel like because it wasn't there, I missed it. I, I missed it more than I thought I would. And, you know, I, I, I because we've been doing this podcast and talking about it a lot, it would have been nice to have talked about the Champions Hockey League and seeing these teams yeah, go up would. against each other in kind of the inter-Europe competition. But alas, it's back next season and Rouen's going to be there. So, Chris, we've got our final league to talk about. I talked about that the League Magnus was an ending. We have a new beginning here for the next four or five weeks. And that's the British Elite League, Chris. We made it. Woo! Yes, so, I know. ladies and gentlemen, the 2020-21, uh, uh, that's what Flash Scores calls it, their Elite League season. However, it's the yeah. kind of... Uh, su- super elite series, series. Elite Series, whatever it's called. I can't really remember. I think it's the Elite Series. It's I think you're right there, Chris. Of- um so british and norwegian basically yeah basically um so yeah manchester coventry sheffield and nottingham are playing for the next month or so and then there's the playoffs and all of that stuff Uh, i want to get into a conversation about the absolute debacle that was their first game with uh, nottingham sheffield we're going to talk about that in a moment but i'd like to talk (laughs) about the uh the standings first so as things stand right now chris remind me how many games does each team play in this elite series uh, 12. It's 12, okay. See, I was uh, I keep getting confused because I know it's like a 24-game season, but I always keep thinking like each team's playing 24 games. Then I think they don't have enough time to play no, 24 games. No, each team is playing 12. So we're already... A each pretty, team's playing 12. Yeah, we're already a decent chunk of the way through the season, Chris. Uh, so <laughs> so um, as things stand right now, the Manchester Storm currently sit in first place in the league with four points in their first two games, a win and an overtime win. Um, so they're doing all right for themselves. Uh, the Coventry Blades, they are in second, uh, three points. They got a overtime loss and a win. The overtime loss coming to the Manchester Storm and a win against the Sheffield Steelers. The Sheffield Steelers are sitting in third place with two points with a win against the Nottingham Panthers and a loss against Coventry. And then last and kind of least, the Nottingham Panthers as things stand right now um, with two losses. They, they lost 3-2 and 3-1, I want to say. Is that the final score of the second one? Uh, yes, 3-1. Uh, so, yep, those are the standings right now. Obviously, they each play 12 games, so they've got each team's got 12 more games, uh, 10 games left to play. Uh, Nottingham are playing Coventry, or Man- I think they're playing Manchester today, uh, or Coventry. I can't remember, who cares? Um, so, that's the standings. There's really not that much that's happened for us to talk about in terms of the on-ice play of these teams or how the standings are going to affect stuff. All the teams are making it to the playoffs anyway, so it's not as if there's any team missing out. It's basically just to get some playing time. Now, Chris, I'm going to move away from the uh, Elite League on the flash scores and just kind of go back to the two of us. So we're going to have a little chat about the Elite League because it's okay. it, it was a it, it was a bit of a shaky start, let's say, for the Elite League. Obviously, yeah. let's let's keep in mind that a lot of these guys, some of these guys, have played in Europe. Um, uh, earlier this season some of the guys have been playing a lot of the players in fact have been playing in the uh norwegian league um which obviously suspended right early january so they haven't played in several yeah. months a lot of the british players might have played in the kind of nihl series but they might not have played consistently as they would in an elite league season i think it's fair to say that the quality of the product on the ice wasn't its finest understandably so given the the circumstances, I think it's going to get a lot better. But Chris, I'm really curious to know your thoughts on what you saw from the On Ice product. Because I could tell that it was very much, it was it was very sloppy in a lot of ways for all of the teams. It wasn't just one team in particular. It's very sloppy, but it's understandable given the circumstances. And I think by the end of the tournament, it will be a lot more refined. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think because it's not an elite league that we're used to seeing, because it's not, half the team isn't Canadian. Yeah. Um, you know, that that does make a difference. It's all been very disjointed because we had the we had the draft, which went fine, but then we were trying to get players in and some players still aren't there because their European team is still in the playoffs mm. and some are arriving soon and some teams have had to have their head coach in isolation for a bit. And <laughs> it's just yeah, and you know, it's kind of the team problems. And as you said, it's um, 
you know, they had the problem with the stream, which I know we'll go on to, and and just that that game itself. What I think the one thing that I have kind of come to the conclusion of already is that the the Panthers Steelers rivalry that particularly and there are Nottingham fans that go at it on Twitter as well, but particularly Sheffield fans just love on completely unrelated matters to say, oh, look at how bad Nottingham doing. <laughs> and you, yeah, you know exactly what I'm saying. Oh yeah, for sure. But you know, and it, it, I think a lot of people have got to forget that the results just don't matter in this. Like there's not a league tie to look for grabs. There's no champions hockey league up for grabs. There's no, it's all just the GB players. But one thing that really, that came out to me was how much that Nottingham Sheffield rivalry needs the fans just to make it anything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because that Nottingham Sheffield game, when you've got players, of course, you've got players that are kind of on opposite sides to where they normally are. Like Nottingham, you know, Bounds kind of Cardiff through and through. Yeah, he's there with Nottingham and, you know, all these Norwegian players that have just come in that don't know this rivalry, which just without the fans, it was just not a rivalry game there, you know there were like no big hits there was nothing and it just it just seemed and I think because it was so quiet as well in the in the stadium and there was the the commentary as well and you know the commentators tried their best with it but it just it just seemed a really it almost seems like you were watching a training match at some point. Uh, that, that's a really not, good point, it, actually. There was something it was lacking. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. Uh, it, it felt that there were times where it was a scrimmage. Like, like uh, you know, like how the Toronto Maple Leafs or something will do like a uh, a blue versus white scrimmage during preseason, and then they'll stream the whole game and let fans watch it. That's yeah. how it kind of felt like. Um, I've, I, I completely agree with what you're saying in a lot of ways. Like, the rivalry didn't feel the same. Obviously... The rivalry was never going to feel the same without fans in attendance because the fans make the rivalry, don't they? Like, no. let, let, let's be honest. The the rivalry between teams like Nottingham and Sheffield is five percent what happens on the ice and ninety five percent what's said on Twitter. <laughs> let, let's be honest. So, um, like, yeah, it's- and the other, the, yeah, and the other thing as well is that you've got like the, you've got the like the players who have been there long term. You know, you've you've got your Lakovic, your Betteridges, and then your other side, you've got your Dad, your Connors, who who tell the other teams. To tell the other players and the teams, you know, they meet each other so often throughout the season. You've got the fans, you've got the noise, you've got all of that. When you haven't really got any of that, and everybody knows that you just have an escape to get to match fix fitness, it just lacks so much. Yeah, uh, but I think also in the kind of the players' defence, like we mentioned, it was a lot of these players' first games as as a part of these teams. So obviously they might not buy into the the rivalry as much. I think come you know the 11th 12th game of the of the season I, th- I think kind of from the sixth game uh the sixth match for each team onwards we're going to see a lot more pushing and shoving after the whistles we might see a few fights and and everything like that but i think the the first few games yeah. is just a lot of these players getting getting acclimated with their their role on a team because uh the elite league has made a big point on their social media to talk about how a lot of young british players have been getting solid ice time which is great but at the same time this is their first real experience of playing against, for one of the, well, for kind of inverted uh, commas, elite league level players. Because obviously some of them might not be in yeah. the elite league, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the fact that um, a lot of these players, they're getting their first experience, whether it be in the league or in UK, the, the UK hockey system in general, um, that there, there wasn't going to be that nastiness to this game that you would see in other games. And obviously, you make a really good point. The fans make such a big part of rivalries, and they make it so much, so much fun to watch. As somebody that cheers for the Nottingham Panthers first, but like I also quite like the Sheffield Steelers. I think they do a lot of good for their community, and they're quite a, a solid organization, all things considered. Yeah, fans on either side can can let tempers flare a little bit. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, like they're two solid organizations, two of the like premier organizations in the league. Um, the fact that the fans aren't in attendance, there, it, it it was lacking something. Um, well, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I think that's why the intensity on the ice wasn't there as well. Because yeah. if you think if you're a um, yeah, if you're Panthers big hitter, for example, and you're at the Nationalized centre, seven and a half thousand fans, of which six and a half thousand are cheering you on. 
your mindset is, I make this big hit against the players on the board. The fans will all love it. There'll be a lot of energy and the players will feed off that. Mm. When the fans aren't there, you think, well, there's kind of no point in me making this big hit because if I miss the big hit slightly or get it wrong, you know, I could get injured, yeah, but if he manages to skip past me, I'm then out of the play. So I may as well just kind of hold him up at the red line rather than trying to make that hit. So, yeah, it lacks something. But I wanted um, your opinion, Hayden, on the the stream, <laughs> YouTube stream on, okay. um, on Saturday night, plus then what Todd Kelman came in the Elite League came and said after it. Yes. So uh, I'm glad you brought this up. Just to kind of finish off on the last point, because I do want to talk about this. Um, I think yeah. I'm glad that you brought up like injuries. I think that's a big part of why we might not see the usual intensity. Because like you said at the very beginning, this is a tournament that's to get our GB players into game shape. The last thing that any of these teams is going to want is one of the key players going down with an injury and missing the tournament. Obviously, does that mean that players are going to not play their usual role on a team and kind of hold back? I don't think so. I think come playoff time, they're not going to they're going to play their usual game, let's be honest. And if injuries happen, injuries are a part of the game. If they happen, they happen. They'll happen to every single other team that takes part in the World Championships as well, not just Team GB. But I think especially early on, also, like you mentioned with the defensive schemes and stuff, a lot of these players are still trying to like learn the game plan from their coaches because they haven't exactly had the longest training camps or anything. So similar to mm. when the NHL came back, it's going to be sloppy for the first couple of games. But once you kind of get a couple of weeks into it, I think we'll start to see the the UK players and the GB players start to really shine and kind of the quality of hockey be much closer to the elite league level that we used to. But anyway, I, I digress. Um, so for those of you who are unaware... We talked about the prices of Elite League TV, uh, I think it was two episodes ago now. I don't think it was last episode. Yes, probably was. Yes. Two episodes ago. So we talked about how it was £150 for all 24 games, £100 for all of your team's 12 games, uh, something like £60, I think, or £70. 60, pounds, yeah. Something like that for uh, your team's home games and £13 each for a game. Now, I've been sitting there for the last couple of days contemplating whether to get the 12-game package or just go single games. And I was busy working, recording, editing a video on the Saturday, which is when the Panthers played the Steelers at 7 o'clock. And I thought, well, I want to watch this game. You know what? I'm going to go for a single ticket because uh, I know, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to watch all of their games. I'd rather have the have the decision where I buy single ticket games. And as long as I don't buy as many as how much it would cost to buy the 12 game, then I've still like made a smart choice, you know? Um, so, yeah. so I went, okay, let's do that. I went to try and log onto the website, went to try and buy the game, website crashed. So the website went down for a very long time. For those of yes. you who aren't aware, um, they had to, they pushed the game. So the puck was supposed to drop at seven o'clock on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, Saturday the third, fourth? I think it's fourth. Um, third. Third, yeah, you're right. Saturday the third. So the puck was meant to drop at seven. They then pushed the face off back to... 7.15 because of the technical issues with the stream. They then pushed the stream back to 7.45 because of issues with the stream. And then once it got to 8 o'clock, an hour after the puck drop was supposed to happen, they decided, let's just stick it on YouTube. Let's just be done with it. Stick it on YouTube. Just get it out there. We need to drop the puck at some point because these guys need to go home at some point because let's be honest, the game finished at 10.30 if, it, if the puck dropped at 8, right? Based on the rough yeah. ideas. So yep. it went on YouTube. It was streamed for free, which a lot of fans weren't happy about. Immediately, fans were asking, I want my money back. Give me my money back. Blah, 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 blah. I was so glad that I didn't pay the £13 to get the single ticket because I got the game for free in the end, as did Chris. We're not going to complain yeah. about that. Um, and uh, throughout the um, stream, they started telling us the wonderful commentators that they had for that game, which were not boring at all. Um, they uh, were telling us that uh, you know, uh, the the stream should be back up, like the website should be back up, so feel free to migrate back over to the website, etc, etc. Now, it's worth mentioning that the Coventry-Manchester game early, earlier that day at 2pm apparently went off without a hitch. Went off absolutely fine, no yes. problem. So the amount of demand for the Nottingham-Sheffield game, which, let's be honest, is higher than a Manchester-Coventry game, yeah. um, crashed the website, basically. So we ended up getting the game for free, um, the next day, or the yeah, it was the next day, I think. Um, yes, yeah. Uh, the Cardiff Devils. Um, is he the owner? Is he the owner or the general manager? 
I can't anyway, remember. I Todd think Kelman. He's yeah, I think he's the owner. Todd Kelman, I think he manages as well because he's the owner. Why not? Uh, Todd Kelman, uh, the Cardiff Devils owner, who's been working with this live stream and trying to get the Elite League TV up. I really respect him for this. I'm not going to lie. I like the fact that he came out and was like, look, we messed up. We weren't expecting um, to get as much demand as uh, we did. Um, we have now decided to go the extreme the other way, make sure we get more than enough than we were expecting um, in terms of server space and upgrading their kind of infrastructure to allow everybody to not have this situation again. That's the part I like. That's the part I really like. Well done, I Todd Kelman. Respectable. I think as a Cardiff fans, and I, I know this from the years I was down in Cardiff, and it is the way it's run is like completely different to how it is kind of up here in the Midlands. Mm. And then Cardiff fans, they're used to this sort of interaction with Todd Kelman. And it was just, for me, it was really refreshing to have somebody just go, look, we messed up, we're sorting it. If you paid the ticket for the single game, because there was talk during the game of saying that like, I'll go back onto the website for it in higher quality. The website will be back up. So we'll stop the free YouTube after like, the second period or something, and that just never ended up happening. No. Um, but they've come out and they've said, right, if you bought the single ticket, you can have another single game for free. If you bought the six game pass, you can have another Panthers home. Uh, sorry, you can have An another away Panthers away game for yep. free. If you bought the 12 game pass, you can have one of the other 12 games for free. And if you bought the 24 game pass, you can have one of the playoff games for free. Now, it was that last bit that was really interesting to me because we debated a couple of weeks ago if you would then have to pay more money for the playoffs. Evidently, you do. Oh, absolutely. But um, So I really like that part of Todd Kelman. And, and refreshing is the perfect word. I was literally thinking about that as you were saying it, Chris, that that level of transparency was so refreshing. I could not imagine the owners of the Panthers or the Steelers coming out and doing it. Maybe the Steelers, but definitely not the Panthers. I would never in a million years imagine the Panthers would come out and make a statement like that, ever. So the fact that um, Todd Kelman was able to do that, and he was like, look, we may as well tell them what happened, because, you know, there's a lot of people wondering. And, you know, like, this tournament's meant to be all about fun, right? And they've paid their hard-earned money. A lot of them are on furlough. You know, they're not making the money that they should be and they've committed it because they want to help support our sport. We owe them some kind of explanation. Good. The bit yeah, I don't like, yeah. the bit I don't like about their kind of plans to, as they say, make it up to us. Now, I didn't pay for the game, so I don't get anything from this. So whatever, you know, yeah. I didn't buy the game. I don't get another free game. That's fine. That's how it works. I got the game for free. I can't complain. I don't like the fact that they offered the the people who have got a 12 game pass the option to, or no, or, or their their team pass, the option to watch yeah, the another, 12 game yeah. team pass. You can watch two of the other teams that you might not be interested in. Exactly. I can, I can see that. Yeah. And a lot of fans, the, the large majority of the response that I saw now, admittedly, I saw these posts relatively early when they were uploaded. A lot of them were like, well, I, I don't want to see a Coventry Manchester game. I don't want to see a, a Nottingham Coventry game. I don't care about those two teams. Like give us a playoff game instead. Like that, they should have done the yeah, exact same thing. Yeah, I think thing. that was the. Yeah, I, I can see where you, where you're coming on with uh, with that, and but I, I, again, the flip side of that as well is that at least because I I wouldn't have put it past at one point them saying, right, well, this game didn't work, so you can have this game for free. Yeah, at least true. People get to pick the other game they get for free. True, but regardless then, but then, if you've but then got again, the single, if, regardless of if you've got the single, the six or the 12, like even if you just bought the single ticket, it wouldn't have surprised me to say, right, you're now having this Tuesday night game for free when you might not be available. Yeah, at but least then, you can pick the yeah, game. But then again, is that the right way to go about doing things by going, well, at least they didn't do the absolute bare minimum you know, it's, it's not a really good like business model, is it? Well, at least they didn't. At least they didn't make us have the absolute bare minimum. They put zero effort into it. At least they did one step above. You know, <laughs> um, but I, 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 mean, I, I do like the fact that Kelman came out and he. I, I like the fact that yeah, he also explained yeah. why it happened as well. I think I think a lot of people would just be like, "Look, we messed up. We're sorry. Here's how we're going to make it up to you." I, I don't that, know. Maybe that's just a me thing, like who wants to know, like no. the behind the scenes stuff. I think that's really interesting. To know, like, okay, we we paid or we uh, secured this amount of capacity that we were 
we weren't expecting it to go beyond that, but you guys smashed it. So we made sure we've gone way the other end and made sure we've got more than enough capacity for you guys to be able to watch it fine. I, li- I like that you mentioned that, you know? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's um, like, like a bad thing, like you say, because again, we haven't had that kind of much of an explanation or, or anything like that. Um, you know, before we've had examples where no explanation has been given. So I, I like that. Um, I like that explanation. You know, it, it is completely fair to say that, you know, it was higher than, than they were expecting. Mm. Saturday night, Panthers, Sheffield, nobody can go anywhere or do anything else. First game of their seasons. First first game of their season. Yeah, you know, we've been without a Panthers game and Sheffield game now for over a year. Yeah. It was something like 380 days since the mm. last time the teams played, not even against each other, just they played. Yeah. So you're always going to have that um and yeah fair enough it was greater than they were expecting and they said look this is what we're going to do about it and and that's uh that's fair enough i think and the one other thing i want to get your your thoughts on sure. and i did send it to you i think i i think i did anyway okay. was the panthers social media part way through the game um <laughs> put out a a tweet with uh, a picture of the, the two commentators, James Brandon and uh, Rick Stratton, who's joining him for, for the Elite Series, and said, you know, can we have a hand for these guys who were, you know, commentating on the game under difficult circumstances? Um, response from the public was not the greatest. It was mixed. It, it yeah, was mixed. it was mixed. The, yeah, the, the, there, there were, were there were several were... comments in support. I'll give them that. It was a mixed response. It there wasn't, were. It wasn't completely were. negative. But uh, I, I think I speak for a lot of fans of that game, especially the Steelers ones. I am I hate it when fans are or, or commentators are extremely biased towards one team. Now, obviously, there's going to be some inherent bias if you're a commentator for a certain team. That's fine. Being happier yeah. when be, being happier when the if you're a if you're if you're a Nottingham Panthers commentator and you're happier when the Panthers score to when you're when the Sheffield Steelers score, yeah, that's fine. That you, you're going to have that kind of bias. You work for the Panthers. You support the Panthers. But I, yeah, it's, it's it's when the commentators make the little snipes against the opposing team or they're like oh well they scored one hopefully they don't score that many more it's like yeah I I get it that you're trying to support the Panthers but like you don't need to say that kind of stuff we know you're a Panthers commentator I I feel like you're turning off half potentially half of your audience especially in a situation like this because they just want to watch a game like the even NHL commentators do this like uh, Jack Edwards the the biggest kind of He's known as a Homer commentator for the Boston Bruins. Like, he's so pro-Boston Bruins and so anti-everyone else. Everyone else outside of Boston dis- really dislikes the way he commentates because he's so far pre-Boston, regardless of anything they do. So, like, obviously every single commentator is going to have a, a, an inherent bias, depending on who they work for, the team they support. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with liking one of the teams more than the other, but that shouldn't come through in your commentary. You're supposed to be as... um. Or, or at least I feel that commentators are supposed to be as neutral as possible. They're there to commentate the game, not be a Panthers fan, not be a Steelers fan. You know, like if you if you want to be a fan and have your own opinion, you go on social media and talk about it. You don't do the official webcast for an elite league game. Um, but I, I gotta say, I think I also speak for a lot of fans here. Uh, it was the most boring commentary I've I think I've ever heard. It was the most boring commentary I've ever heard for a hockey game in my entire life. I could have sat there with it muted and I would have had more fun. I didn't because I thought I'd give him a chance, but my word, I I, I don't mind Rick Strachan. I, I think you could tell that he was quite nervous. It was kind of his first kind of big opportunity to do this. Um, so fair play to him. It, it's not an easy thing to do as Chris will vouch for, like commentating, especially getting up on the camera and doing that. It's not an easy thing to do. So like respect to people that do it, but you can tell that those guys they kind of been thrown together. They didn't have the best chemistry with each other, which for their first game together, you wouldn't expect anyway. It's just, oh, mm, I, I, I didn't enjoy the commentary. And I think I speak for a lot of people when I say that. It just, it just wasn't up to snuff. Jonathan Fernley for the, the Sheffield Steelers. He's obviously a little bit more pro Steelers as all of the uh, commentators are for Elite League games. You know, we're a smaller league. He, he's an example of one of the better commentators like he he knows his stuff. He's entertaining to listen to, which has got to be first and foremost with a commentator. If you're not interesting to listen to, why are you there at the end of the day? But that's my thoughts. What what about you, Chris? I don't want to steal the thunder on that. That's fine. Um, so 
yeah, I mean, I will obviously stand up to the commentators to a point yes. because all commentators together and that sort of thing. <laughs> it's, it's not I, easy. I, it's not easy to do. No, I know. And you know from the one game you came to the Lions and, and sat with me on commentary. And I know you had a bit of a go with kind of 10 minutes to go. It is not an easy thing no, to do. Especially when you have um, like barely any idea who's on the roster. Um, well, they're like, who is this? Ah! <laughs> but like, like colour com- color commentary, I, mean, I, they... I, I enjoy. Like the colour commentary side of it is fun. Yeah. You basically get to talk about the little intricacies that people might have missed in the game. That's the fun stuff for me anyway. Yeah. Um, you've got to remember that, yes, Rick Strachan is not a commentator. He's a recently retired um, assistant coach, so he hasn't exactly had yes. much experience, you know? And James has also not done a commentary, as far as I'm aware anyway, because as far as I'm aware, he only does Panthers, for over a year. True. Now, Jono and I were slightly clunky on the first Lions game we had back. Yes, by the end of it, with, what, six games, six, well, f- four goals in the final minute and three seconds or whatever it was. You know, we, we, we were back up there. but And it is difficult in an empty arena, first game back, um, and all the rest of it. I didn't listen to a great deal of the commentary. And the reason for that is because we were watching Anton Deck Saturday Night Takeaway on Plus One. <laughs> of course. And I had were. it on my phone. Yeah, of course you so were. So I wasn't really paying as much attention to the commentary, but I just saw the, I paid more attention to it after Panthers put that tweet out and I saw all of the reaction. Yeah. Because yes, there was some. There was some positive in there, but a lot that I saw was negative. Yeah, and I, I, and- I think, understandably so. But, but like you mentioned, don't get me wrong. I'd love if these guys are going to keep doing the commentaries. I'd love to see them succeed. I, I, it's not that I don't yeah, want them to do well, you know. I have seen, um, you know, I from just watch Panthers highlights throughout the season. James is a good commentator when he's doing it regularly and all the rest of yeah. it. I, I do think James is a good commentator. Um, and I think the other thing, when you're comparing it to like Jonathan Furley, he was doing the Steel Fair. Dogs and the Simmons commentary point. as well. So again, he's back into it as well. I think that a lot of the, you know, it was the first game. And I think, again, I know this as a commentator. So I feed off the crowd as mm. well um, and, and the players. Because of course, for the Lions, we, we can hear the players a lot better, whereas the they were up at the back. I think give give them a few games and they will, you know, get back to to the level that that people were expecting from from previous seasons. Yeah, I I agree. I like I said, I the last thing I want is for them to you know fail. Like I, I want the the commentators to do well. The la- I don't have any kind of uh, bias against them. I I've barely listened to either of them do commentary before this. I don't really watch many of the Panthers highlight packages or anything. So like I, my experience with them is very very limited. So the fact that yeah it was a bit of a shaky start. Obviously they had all of the technical problems that might have fed into it. They're obviously, by the time they started, they should have at least dropped the puck for the second period or at least been halfway through it. So, um, you know, like there was obviously a lot going on at the same time, but I can understand it both ways because on the one hand, yeah, they obviously, it's been a long time since either of them had uh, either commentated before, if at all. Um, but on the flip side, if it's the first game back, you want interesting, engaging commentary. You want them to suck you in straight away because if they do a really good job the first night, you're going to want to listen to how they do the next time, especially if that's the team you support. And and I, I think you would also agree with this, Chris, that commentary for stuff like this is a big factor into whether people stay and watch or whether they tune out and go and do something else instead. If they're not engaged with the commentary, they're, just, they're more likely to kind of be like, you know what, I think I can skip this or I'll catch the highlights later, or instead of sticking around and seeing the potential magic that can happen on the ice. Yeah, I suppose I suppose there is something in that. And ice hockey is a a more difficult sport to follow on the TV than yeah. to say football because the lines are constantly changing. If football, you have your eleven players, yes, there's substitutes, but you know who the left winger is, you know who the the people in the midfield are, you know who the striker is. So you've got a rough idea of who is where, particularly when, as again in football, you've got different heights, different boot colours, different hairstyles, it all helps you out. Yeah. Ice hockey, when everybody's wearing the same jersey and they're all in a helmet, it, it is more difficult. But, you know, and it is a difficult thing to do. And the one thing I the one thing I want to finish on 
and again, this is in, in support of the commentators, is that it is a hard, hard thing to do. And the vast majority, if not all, of the people who were saying it was boring and no good and all the rest of it couldn't do a better job. No, I completely agree. Like I couldn't have done a better job myself. I'll put that out there. I talk about hockey for my job. I literally do it every day. I don't think I could do it in that sense either. So like props to them for being able to get it done. Uh, the last thing I did want to mention in this episode, um, because we've talked about the the Elite Series, how good did yeah. Liam Kirk look in, in those, those <laughs> opening few games? Like the guy was scorching the net. Like, oh my God, he looks so good. Like you can, you can tell, can't you? You you can really tell that he's been over in America. The, the difference is, is so great. And this is why... That this is a thing that long term, and we haven't got the time to talk about it now, perhaps when all the seasons are done. Yeah. When I was on the Lions commentary, I was talking to Seth Bennett, Luke Thomas, who are both junior coaches. They're saying that the problem we've got in this country at the moment is we've got promising 14 and 15 year olds, and we're having to tell them to go to America, go to continental Europe to get more ice time to develop because we can't do it here. And just look at what Liam Kirk has come back and is doing in the. Uh, in the elite series and that just shows he has the he was the fastest player on the ice he had the quickest release off off the shot he he wow i i really hope he gets an opportunity in the ahl or the nhl at some point Uh, obviously it's still a long shot but the kid knows how to play like his experience with the peterborough peets has been invaluable for him and obviously he yeah. was a go-to guy for them, an alternate captain for the team. He obviously played in Sweden earlier this season and played with the Steel Dogs, so he's obviously got his legs underneath him. I think if he has a really good showing at the World Championships, he could turn a few heads. And I think he's capable of doing it, and I'd love to see it. I want to see Kirky score yeah. up. He is such I a fantastic so. player. But anyway, we can obviously I go into so. more detail about uh, Kirky we can. as he it's lights now... the lamp. Well, what's that? What the? I've now got the fifth spell of snow oh out wow the window today i, I haven't, I haven't <laughs> had any more we only had the the single spell of uh snow oh has there been any update no. in terms of the score with the khl nope looks like still one nothing because i haven't got any more notifications okay. so hopefully maybe st petersburg will shut out moscow this time and show them how it maybe. feels maybe um but anyway <laughs> um on that note i think this is a perfect time to end this week's episode of the euro puck podcast we didn't have a quiz yep. this week because uh you know things get in the way life gets in the way and um but we managed to make up with it by having a little chat about the Elite Series. I think we'll be having several more chats about that as the weeks go on, Chris. Um, yep, so yeah, we if will. you uh, well, thanks for joining us, I should say, guys. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode, whether it's the video version or the audio version. We do appreciate you checking us out. Um, if you'd like to uh, be updated on all things Europark or send us your thoughts, opinions, questions, anything like that from today's show or for our next show next week, you can follow us on Twitter at Europark Podcast and on Instagram at Europark Podcast. We'd love to see you follow us. And if you enjoyed listening to either or both of your host today which we really hope you did and um, then feel free to follow myself on twitter at oddmanrushyt or chris at chris underscore gadsby thanks again for watching or listening guys and we'll see you again next time have a good one folks <laughs>